Misconceptions fill just about every genre of photography, and street photography is no stranger to them. There really aren't many rules in photography beyond the basics of exposure and how to operate your camera. And when it comes to something like your process, how you make photos, that's all really subjective and all up to you, the photographer. You know, anything I say on this channel should all be taken with a grain of salt because I can only speak upon my own experiences. Now that we got that out of the way, it probably makes the rest of this video seem a little pointless, um, but I do want to talk about three different misconceptions related to street photography that I've personally had in the past and I think a lot of other people might have had as well, so let's just clear the air. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Use the code Faisal with the link in the description. You need to have your style figured out. When you look at your favorite photographer's work, you'll probably notice right away with their images that they have this common style to them. There's a signature look to them that says they took those photos. And I think this is a common feeling a lot of photographers have, uh, no matter your level of expertise really, you know, we have this sense of urgency that we need to have this consistent style or look throughout all of our photos. And when you're just starting out photography, that can be a little frustrating and honestly a little bit overwhelming. Personally, I think you shouldn't shy away from other styles and trying those out. You know, I think when you're a beginner photographer, you really don't want to box yourself in to one certain way of doing street photography just because you think or see another photographer's work and you think that's the only way that you should do it. Take it from me, I have personally have gone back and forth between different styles and, you know, I used to feel really bad about it. Um, I never felt like I had a you know, a consistent look to my work that was uniquely me, you know, that I could share a photo and you would know that I took it. I think with the emergence of social media platforms like Instagram, there's this increased sense of urgency that we need to make a name for ourselves. We need to have this known look to our work so the community knows who we are, so that we stand out. So I definitely know where this feeling comes from. The thing is, it's totally fine to not have your style figured out. You know, if you're watching this and you're a beginner, I think it's a really good idea to try to emulate the different styles of different photographers that inspire you. I think it's one of the best ways to, you know, develop your eye and improve your photography. You know, try to shoot like Ernest Haas or Gary Winogrand or Joel Meyerowitz, um, the different photographers that, you know, inspire you, you know, whoever it may be, try to shoot the way they did. Think about the way they looked and observed the world around them. And, you know, over time, you'll pick up different things, different themes and composition that they commonly have in their photos. And over time, you'll start to figure out the way you want to see the world. And yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a common feeling to have, especially, you know, with social media. Uh, we always feel like we need to have this consistent way of shooting. Um, but really what you see on social media is just what people share on like their feeds. I think the Instagram feed really like pushed consistent look like to this whole new level where, you know, we have to have your feed to, to look a certain way. So long story short, don't feel like you need to have everything figured out. Um, I sure don't. And most of us don't either. Everyone's craft is a work in progress. We're always learning and you know, we always go through different phases in our work. It's just part of the process of being an artist. Your location doesn't matter. All right, so this might be a little hot take territory, but uh, I tend to see a lot of people throw out this tip, you know, be it online, on YouTube, whatever. Um, they would say that in terms of street photography, your location doesn't matter. And I think that's a little misleading and sort of kind of ignores a lot of what we do. Now, I, I get where it comes from. We can take great photos anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, but to say that location doesn't matter at all, ignores the fact that street photography has everything to do with location. We're practically always photographing our environment, the people, the architecture. 
you know, the moments we see happening on the street, they're all part of our environment and the greater location we're in. Our photos might not entirely be focused on location, but what we photograph on the streets, it's always going to be part of where we are. And where we are plays a huge role in what we shoot, how we shoot, why we shoot. The location we shoot in also plays a major role in you know, our own inspiration and motivations to photograph the city that we're in. A few weeks back, I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw these two New York City street photographers talking about how New York City isn't inspiring them the same way as it used to, that they feel like they can't shoot New York City anymore. And you know, I'm scrolling through the timeline and I see this and my first initial reaction is, New York City to me has always been that end game city for street photography. You know, it's where all of like the street photographer greats made their work. It's where a lot of my friends left Boston, moved to. You know, there's always that bit of envy and comparison between Boston and New York. They're relatively close and, you know, I'd frequently do small trips to New York City just because it's such a great city for street photography. And despite this tweet annoying me at first, we can always end up feeling this way about where we are. We sort of end up reaching this baseline level of inspiration or excitement about the city we're in. And instinctively, we want to leave the city we're in, maybe for, for good or for a little while. That's why travel exists. You know, we feel so uninspired about the location. Uh, you know, we feel like we photographed everything there is to photograph. Uh, we have this desire to photograph new things see new places but there is a silver lining to it all to feeling stuck about where you are and you know struggling to find an inspiration or reason to take photos it forces you to push yourself out of the comfort zone you have and try to look at the old in new ways i credit taking photos of boston my whole life to improving the way i see differently on the streets it's forced me not to look at the obvious things and, you know, make something interesting out of something that looks like nothing. All of this, it's helped me become a better observer, a better photographer, in my opinion. So, you know, to say that location doesn't matter, it's not quite true. It matters a lot, but it really comes down to what you make out of your location. You know, as much as I preach having the camera on you all of the time on this channel, there is a reason to not bring a camera with you. And it's something that can actually help develop your eye and help improve your way of observing the world around you. I don't know if you've ever been in the similar situation where, you know, you forget your camera and you see something really interesting and you want to take a photo of it. Um, it can be painful, you know, to see that photo, but you don't have a camera um, on you. Um, and for whatever reason, you start to see photos a lot more when you don't have a camera on you. It's probably just your mind uh, making fun of you and reminding you of, you know, your costly mistake. But that's actually a really good practice to have, thinking about photos when you don't have the camera on you. When you subtract the camera from photography, you're just left with your eyes. And you don't have, you know, settings, exposure, uh, this physical object in your way. That's all taken out of the equation and you're just left with your eyes and the moments happening around you. You know, if you took a street photographer who's been shooting for years and you gave them this tiny little camera and you put them up against someone who's never done street photography in their life and you gave them, you know, the best Leica camera or something, the person with much more experience shooting street photography is going to have an easier time creating more interesting photos. They have all of those years added up observing their environment and looking for interesting moments. And that's really what it all comes down to at the end of the day. It's not how good the camera is. It's not how good the ISO performance is or how good it is to edit the photo. It's all about how good your eye is at observing interesting things. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out with the intention of doing street photography without a camera. Um, <laughs> that'd be kind of funny. But, you know, the next time you go out, maybe for a short while to run errands or something, and you don't have your camera on you, think in photos. And, you know, you'll start to develop a habit of always thinking in photos when you're out. And I think it just goes a long way if you do that in, you know, developing your eye. And you can carry that over to when you actually do street photography. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, by the time you're watching this, I'll probably be in Istanbul or flying there. Um, so I look forward to sharing some videos from there. Quite a few planned in the books, so excited about that. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you all in Istanbul.
and thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. NordVPN has over 5,000 servers in 60 countries which you can securely connect to. If you're planning on doing some travel like I am, NordVPN can keep your connection secure and protected. You know, maybe you're using public Wi-Fi or the Wi-Fi in an Airbnb. Your, your data can be exposed to cybersecurity threats. No matter where you are in the world, NordVPN can let you watch your favorite content when you're traveling. No need to stress over your favorite content being blocked in the country that you're in. You don't need to be a world traveling photographer in order to make use of a VPN. You can be a homebody like me and keep your data secure at home. So if this sounds interesting to you, you can visit the link in the description and use the code Faisal at checkout for an exclusive deal to NordVPN.